Okay, so a new version of Manjaro has come out. Uh, I reviewed the last one, Kyria, uh, which came out, well, it came out this year anyway, so 25th of the 2nd. So it's only two months later, and Lycia has been released. And uh, if you go, I'll put a link in the description to this, but if you go to their downloads page, uh, they've already released proper versions for the Pi 4. Uh, so you've got either XFCE or KDE. So I've downloaded both of them which are in my downloads folder here. Uh, and so if you want to write those, just use something like Belena Etcher or Raspberry Pi Imager. I've used Belena Etcher. So pop your SD card into your computer and hit select image, and then whichever one you want. So one of these is the uh, KDE version, and one of these is the XFCE version. I'm going to do the KDE version first. So you just click on that hit open, you don't need to unzip it or anything like that. Select your SD card, I haven't got one in because I've already done it, uh, and then hit flash. Okay, so here is my KDE version of Manjaro. So if I double click on that, if I want to overclock, I can go to config.txt and see what's in here. So there's no overclocking things in here at the moment. So let's try the standard one that I do, which is this one. So the first bit defaults to 1080. I don't think there's any point in running an operating system at 4K on a Pi. Um, so the first bit, and I always leave spaces, you don't need to apparently, but I think it looks tidier. So this bit forces the Pi to output at 1080, and uh, this bit is the over voltage and the overclock. So 2147 is the fastest that the current stable firmware uh, will work with with the Pi 4, although I'm working on one that will go higher, but I haven't really looked at that enough yet. So let's just save that and pop it in the Pi. Okay, so it's just come on with the colored screen, so it's just booting up, so sort of showing it in real time, because some operating systems start up a lot faster than others. Uh, but obviously on a first boot, often they're doing some extra things at the moment. Well, so this asks loads of questions, it looks like. So keyboard layout. God, there's so many. I'll just put UK in there. Username, Lee PSP video, enter additional groups. Let's not worry about that. Full name, password, enter root password, and time zone. Crikey, is there an E for Europe? Europe. Yeah, you can just tap a letter to go in there. Did I go past? Must be London there somewhere. There, London. Uh, locale. GB, desired host name, let's call it Manjaro. Uh, there we go, yes. So applying all the necessary settings to make it all work. So second boot, uh, it just restarted, so I had to restart the screen capture. And I pressed it just after the colored screen shows up, so it looks like it's gonna boot up really quite fast. That's interesting to see a mouse pointer over that the DOS screen, that's unusual. Oh, here we go. So, Lee PSP video. Nice splash screen to start off with. Nice green background. Enjoy the simplicity. So this is the KDE one, if I didn't mention it before. Uh, the other one is the XFCE, which I'll, I think I'll probably show in this same video, uh, or do I do a separate video? I'm not sure yet. So, we're booted up. Uh, the Wi-Fi prompts there. I've got an Ethernet cable plugged in, which wasn't actually plugged in, uh, but it is now. As you can see, it's picked it up. Okay, so let's have a look at the desktop. So you can see down the bottom here, it's like a, a start bar on Windows, an application launcher. Uh, there's no favorites because I haven't used anything yet. So applications, development, Qt. I don't know any of these. This is all web development. You also have an ordinary search here, so if I wanted to type in Fire, Firefox comes up, which is nice. Go back to Applications, go to Education, Maths and Science. Under Internet, we've got Firefox, we've got a VNC server browser and an SSH server browser. Multimedia, we've got a media player, a couple of media players there, like SM player and MPV and then some test and a video capture utility, that's interesting. Office, 
we've got the LibreOffice suite, and we've also got Ocular, which is a document viewer. All feels really snappy, really fast. Add remove software, settings manager, software update, and system settings. So if we do, uh, well, let's see what software update looks like. Oh, this does feel fast, and it does feel very slick. So you can see that it wants to upgrade loads of things at the moment because it's a new install. Installed, browse, and various things we can install on here. Look, really, really easy. So if we go, for instance, to communication and news, we've got Chromium on there, so we could choose to install that if we wanted to. If we go to games, we can flick through. There's plenty of games on there. So let's see some of that look like a bike. No, I thought that looked like a bike as it flashed past. So if I go to search, if I put in, say, something like SNES, you can see that it comes up with a SNES emulator, which I can install. So let's close that down. Applications. What was under system, wasn't I? No, I was under settings. So under system, system monitor. What does that come up like? Wow. Process table, CPU, memory, memory, shared memory, CPU percentage, system load. It's a very nice looking operating system. And just really super logical as well, like everything you do on it, nothing you have to think about. If you've used another operating system that's anything like it, it's very straightforward. Uh, this emoji selector I tried in another video and it didn't do anything. Um, and it looks like it's going to be the same. So I, d I don't actually know what that does. So let's go back and applications, utilities, text editor, archiving tool. I really like this search. It's super easy. So if I wanted to do files, uh, you can see I can type in file and Dolphin File Manager comes up as well as all sorts of things to do with settings. So it's like a universal search, which is as it should be really. So if I wanted to find my so network, if I want to find my NAS drive, is it going to be under network? Oh, someone did say how to do this before in one of my other videos, I think. But I, I always like to see if it just comes up on its own without you having to do anything. And obviously it can you can use a NAS drive with it, but it doesn't find it straight away. Adwit network folder. Yeah, you do it looks like you do have to do various settings to get there, whereas some other systems do it automatically. But it is a very nice looking file manager. Very, very straightforward to use. Very clear. Let's close that down. So let's just do a quick web test as well to see the speed of it. Obviously, it does need updates, uh, and it will do that on its own. It's nice to see that it kind of looks after itself and does it. Some other Linux uh, systems don't do updates automatically, and you have to do uh, you have to use terminal. It looks like some of these systems are getting away from needing to use terminal. So, for people who, who are, are unclear of what to do with terminal, then it's going to help them a lot. So, let's try Hot UK Deals. Yeah, it feels it feels snappy does feel like it's loading up nice and quickly. Just close that Firefox one down and do BBC News. Let's go back between them. So not all the page loads up all at, at once. I think Chromium maybe deals with that slightly better on Raspbian. But again, it's not had all the updates. It's only just started up. It's the first time using it. These things may improve with time, but uh, but yeah, it, it is definitely very snappy. Let's just do a quick tearing test on YouTube uh, because Raspbian, there is a fix for now and it does play uh, YouTube absolutely fine. But a lot of the other operating systems haven't got such a fix, but it's early days, so all the developers can look into what, uh, what fix the Raspbian and Chromium. Invents his blog, he's managed to get uh, things like Disney Plus and Netflix and various things. That, yeah, if you, you can see, see a shift or a break in these vertical black and white stripes that forms a horse. Just mute that, but you can hear the sound works fine. So if I put that in 1080 and go full screen, 
you can see that the tearing issue is definitely there. So hopefully they can fix that. Hopefully someone sees this and, and then looks at maybe Vent's blog, sees what he did, and then they can apply that to the operating system. Uh, and then we won't have tearing on the Pi anymore. Okay, so that is Manjaro KDE. I'm really impressed. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.